These are some crazy speakers. I've been using them for around a month or so now and I have never been so tempted to just drop 4 grand on something before. Hey guys, we have the KEF LS50 Wireless 2 with us today along with the KC62 subwoofer which is a separate purchase by the way. It costs around 2.5k sing or around 1.8 US and the speakers themselves cost around 3000 US dollars or around 4000 Singapore dollars. Before we get into the review, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. So, let's talk design. These look gorgeous. I have the mineral white colorway and the mix of white, black, and this bronze copper color is stunning. That being said, these are pretty hefty speakers. Each unit comes in at around 10 kilos, so these two alone are around 20. And this is around like 13 or 14 kilos, so yeah. Definitely not something that you'll be able to handle yourself if you're not a guy. That being said, this sub is definitely a lot more compact than a lot of other subwoofers that I've seen, although it's also a lot more dense, so yeah. On the right primary speaker, you get a touch control strip on the top with buttons for power, switching inputs, muting the speakers, and volume control. It's definitely responsive, and while you can control the speakers with the app, it's nice to have some built-in controls. There's also a remote control if you're using these as TV speakers, but I left that in the box because I was predominantly using these with my desktop. Setup was a breeze once I got these seated on my desk. All I needed to do was plug in the power cables, connect the sub to the right speaker, and turn everything on. I pulled up the KEF app, connected everything to my Wi-Fi network, and yeah, done. Well, I also plugged in the HDMI cable to my PC, but you know, that's besides the point. On a side note, these speakers also come with threaded inserts on the bottom so that you can use them with uh, Kev's floor stands, although I use them on my desk, so yeah. Inside though, is where the magic is. These are active speakers, and they draw 380 watts of power each. 100 watts to the class AB amp powering the tweeter, and 280 watts to the class D amp powering the mid bass driver. The metal material absorption tech though is what's really cool about these. It's a structure that looks like a maze and it removes unwanted sound from the drivers to reduce distortion. And I can attest to that. No matter how loud I was using these speakers, there was pretty much no distortion at all. On the back of the right speaker, you get a bunch of ports. An AC port, of course. An RJ45 network port. A service USB-A port. An aux port. A coaxial port a Toslink optical port, a HDMI eARC port, a sub out port, and an inter speaker RJ45 port. Pretty much something for everyone. There are also three buttons there. One to reset the speakers, one to put the units into primary, secondary pairing mode, and one for Bluetooth pairing. Things get a bit more complicated when you throw the KC62 sub into the mix though. It's easy enough to set the mode to LFE and connect the sub to the primary with a sub cable. Then you can start adjusting the crossovers, phase control and such. In the app, when you connect the sub, you can let the app know which sub you're using. And the app will recommend you to set the sub according to Keith's suggestion, with the volume gain knob turned to 3 o'clock for the KC62. There's also a slider in the app to tune the speaker subwoofer balance and control the volume. Something that I noticed with the sub though is that if the music you're listening to isn't bassy enough or if it's at playing at a lower volume, the sub actually stays in standby mode. So that's the orange, the orange light over there. So you know that the sub's not actually firing. It only activates or it only turns on when certain criteria are met, which basically means that your music needs to be playing at a certain volume or there needs to be enough bass in your music. So, if your sub isn't turning on and the light is remaining orange, that could be a possible reason why. The subwoofer isn't particularly necessary, but I would say that it is definitely noticeable whether you have a sub or not. 
even without the sub, I was getting quite a lot of bass, but with the sub added in, it definitely added depth and power to the music. Now, let's get a bit technical here before we get into how these sound. They are able to operate completely wirelessly as evidenced by the name with a 24-bit 96kHz connection between the two speakers or you can run a cable between them for a 24-bit 192kHz connection. Overall connections, you can stream the standard formats like MP3, ALAC, FLAC, WAV and more but the speakers are also capable of up to DSD-256 and they can unpack MQA files. So title subscribers, you're covered here. As for the sound, holy c it's insane. The first thing you notice is that the sound stage is incredibly wide, both in terms of depth and height. Instrument layering and imaging is on point. You can pinpoint instruments and vocals with a lot of accuracy. There's so much air and spaciousness with beautiful clarity and dynamics. It's a very clean sound with no distortion at all and the mids are crystal clear with plenty of definition in the bass. It's an incredibly agile system and it handled everything with ease, from music to game audio to watching shows and such. The spatial reproduction is crazy. I mean, I'm gonna let you guys listen to some music played on this and while it will not do the speakers justice, you can at least sort of have an impression of how it sounds. Honestly, I must admit that I am quite biased towards these. I prefer active all-in-one speakers and these deliver. There's wireless support for Tidal, MQA decoding, it's super easy to set up, it plays nice with everything and it sounds so freaking good. Honestly, if you guys are on the fence, these are definitely worth the money. The only quibble I have is that sometimes, if I don't realize that the speakers have automatically turned off and I'm playing something on my comm and then I realize that they're off and I turn them on, the right speaker actually kicks in slightly faster than the left. It's an incredibly small issue because they equalize or like, you know, get up to speed within like 3 seconds. But yeah, just something to note. Other than that though, they're golden. At 4000 sing, they're not cheap, but they're worth it. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Keef LS50 2 wireless speakers. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to us and like this video. Till next one, see you guys!